hydrogen as isotopes are deuterium with one proton and one neutron and tritium with one proton and two neutrons. So they collide with a very high energy at temperature around 150 million degrees, which is 10 times higher temperature than in the center of the sun. And they can fuse, so we have helium element and we have one neutron. So this is the most important part of the reaction because neutron takes 80% of all energy of the fusion reaction. Over the development of the past decades, two concepts have basically survived this Darwinistic process, and that's the tokamak and the stellarator. And both have in common that the magnetic field is ring-shaped. But there's, there are subtle differences between tokamak and stellarator, not just the name. Now, tokamak is a Russian word, and essentially it just means a donut. That, that is not exactly what, that is not what Rush, Russian for donut is, but a tokamak is essentially a donut-shaped chamber. So a tokamak is a Russian acronym, and uh, it means just in Russian language, um, toroidal chamber and magnets. So it's very, very straightforward. And so it has nothing to do with a tomahawk. Never, never confuse that. It turns out we need strong magnetic fields. So we actually need uh, two types of magnetic field. Uh, the first one happens in what we call the toroidal direction. This is following the shape of the torus around. But that wouldn't be quite enough to keep it completely confined. So what we do is we actually want a magnetic field as well in what we call the poloidal direction. And that sort of introduces a twist. thing you do is you evacuate that vacuum vessel. You pump it and you get rid of all the gas in it. Then we starting to charge our magnetic system around the vacuum chamber. You put a tiny amount, about a postage stamp worth of fuel, you inject that in multiple areas. And then you switch on a solenoid which is in the middle of the, of the tokamak. And this, by the magic of physics, create an electric field in this, in the donut. The hydrogen gas, deuterium and tritium, start swirling around inside the tokamak. Then our first heating system kicks on and it zaps this gas into a plasma and the whole thing starts swirling around the tokamak. So then you use the, the, the RF heating systems and another heating system called neutral beam. You fire in beams of particles and that gets you from the sort of 1 to 10 million degrees up to the 100, 150 million degrees. And then the process of fusion starts. The particle can knock each other sufficiently fast so they fuse and then they produce energy. Then you have lit a sun inside your cage.